guys, I'm Alice from RX17 Studio and today we're gonna paint a piece of terrain for this amazing game. Let's go. trying to recreate the gate of Cursed City from the artwork of the game itself. It's been a while that I've been watching all these amazing creators doing this amazing stuff with XPS foam and stuff like that. And I was so eager to try it until I actually tried it. Yes, very hard process. It was frustrating but fun. I had a lot of pressure for the video because I had to produce this video and I was kind of in a hurry and I guess I could have enjoyed more. I actually was happy with how it turned out. I made a lot of mistakes like at the beginning I started with a base of chipboard. I wasted a lot of time and effort and energy trying to cut this hard piece of chipboard with this, this bread knife. Use this. Yes. And there were a lot of things that could I, I could have done better, more precise. I'm not very tidy as a person. I'm not very precise with measurements and stuff. So it was hard for me, but I had fun. I had plenty of fun. And I think maybe the hardest part will be the painting because I never ever ever painted something like that. And I had in my mind that I would be able to do it. But no, uh, I wasn't. So for this video, PK Pro, uh, which is one of my favorite miniature tool sites here in Europe, sent me some stuff. I ended up not using a lot of the stuff they sent me because I just uh, had to surf this wave of cursed cities and not use all the products that they sent me. I did use the balsa wood and some other stuff, some other cool stuff they sent me. Most professional miniature painters here in Italy and Europe use PK Pro as main source of tools. You can find everything that you need to do both do dioramas and airbrush, airbrush tools, every possible brand that you can think of. So I will link them down below and you can go shop there for your tools and stuff that you want to buy. And they're really nice because when they send you stuff, they actually just wait, wait, wait. You get candy. What's better than that? Uh, check the link down below. But let's just dump back into the terrain piece that I'm attempting to do. I ended up not using a base at all. Because it's a terrain piece. Doesn't need a base at all. So. But yeah, I wasted a lot of time on that. The chipboard was useful for just one thing. Trying to figure out how big I wanted my terrain, my uh, door to be. Just remember, I don't want to sound obnoxious here or anything, but uh, use always a reference of your scale, like a miniature. Especially I used this one from Warcry because the miniatures in uh, Kurt City are gonna be this, this dimensions. I use this as guide or reference to, to figure out how large the, the tower was and the wall was, was gonna be and all that. I started by gracefully cutting the walls directly on the foam. I was gonna need four pieces for this because I was gonna glue the two walls together to form a platform on which the miniatures could stand on. I gracefully cut the foam with no effort at all, cutting through water. Then I proceed to and thinking about the tower. Thinking about it now, 
I could have done so many things with this. Much more easy, much more precise, much more less tedious. But no, I had to do it the hard way. What can I say? I like it the hard way. So I proceeded to cut 21 pieces, six by six squares on my foam. And it was tedious. My cutting skills are flawless. It's not gonna be a problem at all, right? After cutting the squares, I switched from a chipboard base to a foam base that I discarded later on. So, yeah. Started by gluing the walls together and then cleaning a little bit the edges. I did some sanding on the, the walls. Next, uh, the square pieces. I proceeded to glue them all together in a very crooked and an unprecise way. And that was, was the stupidest thing because I could have just cut a little bit more of that square and just do it one by one by one, do a precise cut, that would have been much easy. But no, I had to do an imprecise one and then glue them together and attempt to cut them while they were glued all together. Smart, huh? You're gonna use that. It wasn't just messy, it was also very tedious because I had to cut 21 or 22 pieces of this and it wasn't fun. I don't know, it's, I don't know if it's just me and, 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 and my lack of strength or my knife wasn't sharp enough. It's just so hard for me to cut that goddamn foam. Come on! I tried to sand it a little bit, cut the edges, but why not? Doing some speckle, like icing on a cake, very satisfying, but at the end, kinda pointless. So before we continue reviewing this thing, I remind you to subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to stay up to date to the Twitter channel. If you like this kind of content and you want to support me, keep doing it. You might want to consider visiting my Patreon page and maybe pledging a few dollars. I do monthly feedback and in-depth feedback for $5 pledges. And also you can ask me for a commission. That's that. Let's get back to the Humiliation. Next time I use AK Interactive Foam to, to cut the external wall using my wall as a template. So do cutting it a little bit higher than my wall. As always, before gluing, I just clean up the uh, edges. Then I will be cutting the upper part of this wall at an angle so I can later put on the shingles that you can see on the actual artwork. Then I tackle the upper part, the kind of bridge that connects the two towers that is gonna be the, like the gate. And I just cut a piece of foam like 17 centimeters per five centimeters. So a little bit slimmer than the actual towers. I cut it and I send it, like always. Next part is gonna be a, little, a bit tricky because I will cut the arches of the gate. And even here I use my bridge as a template and I just draw with my pencil a silhouette of what I wanna do and cut it with an X-Acto knife. Of course, while I snap the left part or the right part, I don't remember, it snapped and it broke and uh, I had to do it uh, all over again. I had to do just that part all over again, but it wasn't a problem. I just used the other part as a template and then connected them and glued them on the bridge. <coughs> Call it done. Here I could have used like toothpicks to give more stability to this bridge and towers. But yeah, uh, always try to find the best fit I'm not a person, I'm, I don't wanna teach anything in this video because it's not my field, I'm not, I'm just trying this out for, for fun. You might be noticing a little bit of imperfection on the, the arch, it's no problem because we're gonna cover it with some bricks, so who cares? And finally I started gluing all together. As I said before, the biggest problem were the tower that were crooked, 
they were kind of wonky and not very straight and it was so hard for me to find the right fit with the wool and that wasn't gonna be weird this time I did use toothpicks to fix the wall to the towers but yeah it was kind of hard to find that balance I had this thought to just uh, discard the, the the towers and do it all again but then I said no I don't want <laughs> I don't want <laughs> I don't want to do that And with that, the main structure is complete. And we can, we can jump to the fun part. Time for the bricks. <sighs> How was it to do these bricks? It was crazy. I don't know if I... I thought I would have been like more cathartic or something like that, but it, it wasn't. It was very tedious. And in the final project, I, have all, I had all this residual glue on the on the stone because I went so fast maybe too fast and I didn't have enough time maybe next time if I do a project like this I will take my time and in the meanwhile do something else with YouTube because I, I don't think rushing terrain is good for anybody it has to be fun and you have to take it little by little to, for it to be fun if you do it like five days just doing just terrain I don't know I, I, I would feel like going crazy I definitely have mixed emotion about this project from one side I was very excited from the other side I was kind of tired and uh, kind of feel pressured by the, the date approaching and the, and the time and stuff like that I felt like oppressed by it but yeah I wanted to finish so I had to finish uh, and I glued uh, bigger bricks to the arch of the gate. I didn't record yet, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I was going crazy already. But yeah, just they're just bigger stone cut at an angle that I saw uh, on my Idol Eric's Hobby Workshop channel. So here I want to do a couple of wooden supports like I've seen on, on, on Eric's channel. So I just pierce the foam with a toothpick where I wanted to place the pieces of balsa wood that actually PK Pro sent me. Thank you. And being careful doing in the same spot and the same height for each tower. Here we have more bricks, more bricks, more bricks. I finally took care of this left, right, left side of the building and today is Saturday and I, I really hope I can finish at least this wall and maybe before the, the, the other week starts I will be able to get this one done. This is my first build so I think it's kind of okay that I made some mistakes. Uh, it has been pretty tedious, I have to say, doing brick by brick. But yeah, I'm gonna keep going. And luckily for me, this build is it's pretty easy. Um, I'm thinking about uh, putting a gate here because it, in the actual uh, illustrations of Curse City, you have this uh, like a thingy, I don't know the name of, in metal. But then again, if I put it in, uh, I, want my I want to use this terrain piece as uh, to, to play with. I don't know if I will be able to do that because I, I don't know the game yet. 
but I want my miniatures to pass through it. And if I put the, the, the net here that I'm thinking about, it won't be possible. So I'm, I'm actually thinking about just uh, leaving it like this uh, open. Hopefully this comes pretty great and I, I will be able to next week to start putting the video together and doing also the, the painting part. I have a British accent. What, what kind of accent do I have? Actually put thinner bricks on the wall side, not on the tower side, because the space between the tower and the wall was getting kind of thin and I wanted that tower to pop. And the trick about bricks is just randomly stuck them. You just have to be careful about the strings of hot glue because those can really mess up your work. You live, you learn. Done with the bricks, I start cutting some balsa wood that PK Pro sent me to do the wooden supports that I was talking about before. And here I actually had just, just, just one per size. So I initially cut it in five centimeters, but then I realized it wasn't gonna be enough for every piece of the towers. Glued the pieces of the balsa wood on, and then I put a little brick in so the gap would be filled. Now it's time for the pavement and I'm just cutting a half piece of foam, checking the size of the pavement above the wall and the tower. And from here, I just used uh, this amazing rolling pin from Green Stuff World, which are very useful to do um, a brick work. I had some issues with scoring the foam because I noticed that you have to have your pencil like kind of laying flat, not very parallel to your foam because otherwise you're gonna completely ruin it. And that's what I did uh, at the beginning, especially the wall side was pretty bad because I kind of ripped all the foam. Oops. Then I do the upper part of the wall above the bridge and the towers with a piece of foam and a piece of the black one from AK Interactive. I don't know the difference between them. I don't think it's foam board, the one of AK Interactive. I don't know what it is. Write it in the comments, maybe it could be useful. And so I kept them and attached them with sticks because they are, otherwise I, would be, I was afraid that it would be kind of wonky. And here I made a few mistakes in calculating t the height and I had to glue uh, a smaller piece to the left side or whatever side you it's gonna be covered with panels so don't worry about that it's no problem and now using popsicle sticks just gonna score them and to give it some wooden texture with uh, my cutter and then I'm gonna cut the end off and snap it into little bit little pieces, just like in the artwork, and I'm gonna cover the upper part of the gate.
And here I wanted to do something gothic with the upper part of the foam that was gonna be exposed after the wooden part that you actually can't see in the artwork. I was gonna go something weird and gothic looking and spoiler alert, it went shit. My first time thing happened. Now, the last part was the shingles. I just cut some popsicle sticks and glued them on. I seal everything and I finally am done. Mod Podge and primer. Just put it all on my structure and wait it 24 hours. <clears throat> and then came painting. What can I say about that? It went really bad. I had an idea in mind and I, I wasn't really able to get it on my terrain piece. And I kind of want to adjust it off camera because I don't think that I'm good enough to actually show you the process because there is no process when you are not able to do something automatically you don't have a step-by-step -step to share with people so it's much more confused and that's what painting this piece was for me i started with a base coat of chrome red and i thought that would have been a good start because the artwork is very reddish good idea no but no at the beginning i kind of saw what was going. I painted all the different stones in different colors. It blends all these uh, stones together with another dry brush of a lighter color. And in this case, I used this acrylic gray, so it was less dark than my base coat. The true disappointment started when I attempted a wash technique and I just couldn't do it. So I got really frustrated with the process. And I figured, uh, well, I don't wanna teach anything. I'm just sharing my experience. And I used some inks, some Liquitex inks, just throwing them directly on the wall and up and trying different colors. I will be working on it a little bit more. I think I will do like, you uh, will be using pigments, oils, something like that to make it look a little bit cooler. The painting process uh, for me was a no, especially filming it. That's what I was able to share about this project. Anyway, I'm done for this video. I will be painting a lot of stuff from this box. Stay tuned because that I can do. I can paint miniatures. I don't know if I can paint terrain, but I can paint miniatures, I think. But that is it for me today. Click the bell button so you stay update. Tomorrow is my birthday. Now, uh, today is Tuesday and tomorrow is my birthday. So happy birthday to me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with me. And um, I hope I inspired you to do, to do some terrain because if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, watch your time. Bye.